book is really detailed and almost loving in your early childhood in Akron. Well, I, I, I'm sure that some people have never been to Akron. And, you know, when you grow up somewhere, you kind of think, well, that's all you know. And then it's kind of a shock when you leave and people don't know anything about it or they don't even know where it is. I mean, it's famously known that you came to, to London at the sort of outset of punk rock, but there's a lot of sort of running in the book prior to that. You go to Canada, you go to Mexico. Um, where do you think this, the wanderlust came from when you were young? I, I'm pretty sure that people are just born the way they are. I, I don't think you really, uh, I think these are character traits. I mean, my brother lives in Ken, Ohio, and he loves it. He lo he's a gardener and he's a sax player. And, um, you know, he, he loves being there. He doesn't want to leave. You know, I have to move every three months. I, I'm constantly moving. Even now? Yeah, I always have to keep moving all the time. And sometimes um, I like to just, I'll see a bus and I'll just get on the bus just so I can be moving. Just, you know, I had my little jobs, my little uh, endeavors to make a few bucks uh -huh. to keep myself. But, you know, it really was a hand-to-mouth thing for a long time. Which was fine with me because I was in London and I loved London. You can tell that in the book. I love the fact that you just get on the tube one day and go to Muswell Hill because you know the name from the Kinks. Yeah, Record I think it was a bus actually. It's yeah. bus, sorry. Oh, even now when I go to St. John's Wood, I think of Play With Fire, the Stones song. <laughs> it is crazy, but I learned all that stuff from, from those songs and I fell in love with it and that's it. You don't fall out, you know, it lasts for a long time. How did you find the experience of writing a book compared to songwriting? Well, I don't feel like I'm a writer. I don't, never really felt like that. I never really felt like I was a musician either. Um, I'm not quite sure what I thought I was. I thought I was kind of more of a, um, like, um, hmm. I mean, just band leader. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, the process of writing, well, sometimes it was fun. You know, I know how to type. That's the good thing. I wasn't doing that and, you know, at least I can sort of type. I thought if the book was kind of like putting on an album and you could get through it to the end and it was a pleasure, mm. you know, and that, that's how I wanted the book to feel. I didn't want to get too bogged down in my, I mean, thank God for the editors because I had a lot more social commentary in that book. <laughs> and when they, when they said, okay, we put it in some kind of chronological order, now seam it back together. I was like, hey, what happened to the American Indians? <laughs> and, you know, I guess they thought that was boring. So, you know, I mean, I had to trust them. George Orwell said that up until the age of 30, he assumed that any undertaking he, he did would fail until he finally had some success. And in the book, there's a great line where you describe yourself as a horse just going on towards the glue factory in your late mid-20s, I think. So was it a surprise to you when you finally did get a band together? Contrary to what people might think, you know, they, they think that I had, or that one would have the determination and never give up. And I mean, that's not true at all. I'm really a natural born quitter. I just wanted to get in a band. And around that time, 76, when people were getting in bands, I mean, I think to be honest, I wouldn't have tried to do it before then because I wasn't really that confident. Hmm. Confidence is a, again, it's a bluff. Then with punk, it looked like Anything was possible all of a sudden because they didn't care if you could play or not. Mm. And they didn't care what you looked like or if you were a girl or a boy or anything. It was really a, a brief moment mm. when anyone could like, it was like a little hole in the fence and if you were fast enough and you ran fast enough, you could get through the hole mm. and a band was waiting for you. Me getting the pretenders together, you know, it didn't just, it's not like the guys I went to school with and mm. we said, let's get in a band. You know, mm -hmm. I really... I, you what? <laughs> I, had a, I had a hard time find, I had a hard time getting out of Akron and finding those guys who were in Hereford. You know, uh -huh. it didn't just I didn't just get it mail order. No. So you know when you've really worked very hard and struggled for something, I think just letting it go doesn't. It's not really in your consciousness. James Honeyman Scott's death was so unexpected for you. Almost with the course he was on at that time, it would have been less surprising if. Pete found him. Well, no one saw that coming with Jimmy. Um, we were so enthusiastic. We were having meetings about what we're, how are we going to go forward. He was really keen. He was playing. Jimmy just wanted to hang out with, with guitar players and musicians. He was so music driven. Uh, and when he died, it was just, um, well, when I got to that point in the book, 
I, I did start, I kept writing, so I didn't really write it originally in any sequence. I was just throwing these vignettes out, and um, uh, then we put it in some kind of an order. And when I got to that point, I, um, I just, you know, Jimmy dies, Pete dies, and I didn't seem, I started going on about, well, then we held auditions, and then, and it just felt wrong. I didn't know how I could, you know, you know, there was nothing more to say once Pete and Jimmy died. I know I kept the name The Pretenders, and if I had been a more cor courageous person, I would have just changed the name of the band and maybe used my own name. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I never wanted to be the middle of it. I never wanted to be that, that up front. And if I changed the name, I didn't know what I was going to do with these songs that we uh -huh. devised on our first two albums. So I just kind of just but stumbled along with the name and kept it for 30 years. Do you think there'd be a part two? I'm not sure if I'd keep writing about my experience in bands. I don't know if it's interesting. I, I don't know. Well, you said you wouldn't do this one, so. Yeah, well, you know, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if I would. I haven't thought about it. I just haven't thought. I just want to get this out of the way so I can. What I really want to do is get in a little band. I've already found some guys, actually, well, and, a, and a girl. You're starting again? Yeah, because I, for the last couple of months I've been I've been saying how bands are over well I look forward to that Chris. well you 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 play don't you I, I give me a call I've, I've already <laughs> told the girl in the band I said we're gonna get Niven in to guest on this thing if this happens um, you your name's already on I down have there. guitar will travel <laughs> Chrissy thank you very okay. much